Hello. Today I'm working on a couple of Panasonic Super VHS machines. Both of these have a built-in digital time-based corrector, so they're very useful for video transfers. Let's start with this one, which I featured just a few weeks ago, which had a fault, which I worked around, but there was a hazard the fault could return, and it has, so let's fix that one first. And then secondly, we have the um, NVHS 950 with a mechanical fault. We'll do that one later. So this is the NVHS 930, uh, and I had a problem with this, that it developed a strange head switching fault, and I worked around it by adjusting uh, the position of a motor. And that worked fine, but uh, some people in the comments had seen the fault before and said, yes, the real problem is that there's a magnet that's shifted below that part of the motor, and that's the reason that I'd had to adjust things. And of course the hazard is if that had shifted once it could shift again. And that I think has happened. So let's just try to play a tape and see what effect we get. Well at the moment we're getting pretty much no picture at all which just looks like clogged heads but that is not what I believe was going on. Well maybe partly what's going on but the problem is I think that we can see a big line in the top of the picture when you see a picture at all. And that means the heads are switching at completely the wrong time. So it's trying to play back fresh air rather than videotape. So I'll need to take the head motor apart again. It's fairly easy. Let's get stuck into that. So I had previously made a, a workaround adjustment to the position of this motor. It's supposed to be normally vertical and I'd rotated it by about 45 degrees to get the head switching point roughly right and then let the machine do its own uh, fine adjustment. It's got a procedure in it to do that. But clearly the motor is all wrong because the magnet beneath it has shifted. So let's take this apart, get to that magnet and correct its position. So the fault is not in here. Okay, the problem is that this magnet is supposed to be glued into position and it's not. It's free to move and of course what's happened is it slid around like that and massively altered the position of the head switching point. There's a small hole here and we believe that that is the marker that tells us where the join in this magnet is supposed to be. See there's a, a what looks like a crack there. That's where two halves of the magnet meet up. And that is roughly where it's supposed to be. But the thing's broken loose and is going all over the place. So all we need to do is line it up with that and use a little glue to uh, secure it in place. Can I pull it right out so I can get some glue in behind it? Maybe? No, mine doesn't want to come out. You can sometimes take this magnet right off, apparently, but not today. Right, so what I think I'll do, I'll just confirm that is correct by just leave that there. Hopefully it'll stay there for just long enough that I can test that we get a good picture with this magnet in that position and the drum, uh, the motor, correctly fig uh, assembled this way around. You remember I'd slackened off this little grub screw in here to allow me to rotate this collar which sets the screw positions on the top part of the motor. So I need to get a, it's a bit awkward, I need to get a small allen key in there to undo this little grub screw and rotate it back to its proper position with the holes up and down. Uh, if I had an extremely small allen key that could fit in there it would be a lot easier but I don't. So by taking this part off, this is the part that's got the slippery magnet, I can rotate this collar back into its proper place and then test that everything works before I glue it good and proper. So that should be set almost vertical. I think when I originally found the machine it was just left of vertical. 
Here's our slippery magnet. Now I'm not going to be able to get it out unfortunately, which would help for gluing. I think what I'll do is I'll start with just a little super glue to hold that in place while I do the test and then if that works okay then I'll use some aldite or uh, epoxy resin. So that's the correct place. I'll put a little bit of uh, super glue on here. Just a little super glue. Hopefully that will stop it sliding around for long enough that we can do the test. Okay, hopefully that's close enough. Let's see if we get a picture at all. Though we may have clogged heads as well, that could be a separate issue. I'm just going to wind the tape a little bit. Okay, that's close enough. Uh, I will now glue that magnet in more permanently and then do the head alignment procedure for the machine. Right, is the magnet still free to move? Do you know what? I'm thinking super glue might actually be the best glue for this job rather than uh, epoxy resin because it has to fit into a very small space. It seems to have done a really, really good job. So I'm going to add a little bit more super glue around the top. <coughs> Okay, we'll now go through the um, procedure again where it sets up its own uh, head switching point uh, more accurately than just the mechanical adjustment. And I did this in the last video. You press fast forward and eject simultaneously for three seconds. The fast forward button on this is dreadful. It's this thing it only works when it feels like it. Oh, and cover up the opto sensors. They don't like too much light. So we switched it on, fast forward and eject for three seconds, and then it goes into this mode. It's got 103 on here. We need to uh, press fast forward and eject simultaneously twice to get that to two. There we are. It had already done one of them because this button here, this fast forward is terrible. Uh, then Press eject for three seconds and this, those segments should go off or flash. Yep, that's working. If you can see that, I do hope so. That's gone off. And then channel up, which is on the remote control. Oh no, you can do it on here. Once. Uh, then you get one on there. And then insert, well, you're supposed to use an alignment tape, but we don't have that. Just a tape we've recorded on a new Super VHS machine some years ago. And if it works, it ejects the tape. And if it doesn't work, it comes up with an F2 or F20, I think I had last time, error message. So now, uh, that should be in good working order. Uh, and then you can release the service mode by pressing these buttons until you step round to normal operation like that. Now, put a tape in, and we should be good. So that's working fine now and I will before we go test the hi-fi sound as well. So that's that machine fixed, let's work on the other one. So this is NVHS 950 uh, with a K mechanism uh, and it's got intermittent loading problems and regular viewers to my channel will know what's wrong with it already. So it may work, let's listen to it. It did work that time, and that's playing fine. But we'll uh, try that again a few times. <laughs> because of course, when you want something to not work, it works fine. I'll take the lid off and we can probably instigate the fault. 
I've left a note on the side here that uh, it was perfect in good working order when I swapped the heads and deck over back in 2011. At this point the microphone uh, fell out of our main Sony camcorder which was a terrible nuisance, we lost sound, so we're in voiceover mode for a little bit. Uh, I tried holding the guides back during loading several times to put a little bit more load on the loading motor, but it didn't instigate the fault today. But anyway, we know the cause. It's a loading motor coupler, so we need to get the loading motor out. Now, there's no access from underneath the machine, uh, even though it looks like there might be, because there's a big metal panel at the bottom but if you take that off it gets you nowhere so you have to take the deck out now we start by taking the front off uh, which is some clips then to remove the deck uh, we remove three typically three screws um, there's two at the front and one at the back now the ones at the front, uh, you need to slide the carriage out of the way a little bit and you need to release a catch on the left, the top left, just under where the light is unfortunately on the left hand side there. Remove that, re release that catch from the top, then uh, you can undo the screws and take them out uh, and eventually get to the point that the deck is now loose. Now, uh, of course, this is all much harder if you have a tape stuck in there because you have to take the carriage off and retime that when you put it back. Now, let's disconnect it all. We have the head amplifier cable at the top. Uh, there's an erase head cable. There's an audio control head cable. There's a deck flexi cable. Uh, on some decks that have got this K mechanism, there's a transistor mounted here on the back right. uses the deck for uh, cooling heat sink. So you may have to unplug that. Uh, unplug the head motor cable from the PCB unless you've taken the head amplifier off anyway because the uh, connector goes underneath that. But it's a little bit awkward to get to. And in this particular case, we seem to have a fourth screw. Wasn't expecting that. Ah, midday, almost lunchtime. Deck out. Now to remove the bracket that holds the loading motor, there's a little clip at the top. You have to sort of squeeze two plastic lugs together to get that out. Uh, and then we can remove this, well, we'll first remove the screw and then squeeze those lugs and wiggle it and jiggle it. And also be careful with the pin at the far end. Uh, and then eventually you'll get the bracket out. So now you need to re release the clips that hold the motor in. There's one at the back, two at the front. There's uh, a clip for the connector and there's a clip that uh, goes at the far end of the, the motor shaft. Uh, when we've got that out, we can take off the outer pulley. It just pops off and inside is the coupling, which is the problem that splits. Now you might be able to glue this but we're extremely lucky we have a few spares. Before you remove it, uh, note that there's a small gap at the end of the coupling to the shaft. So you're supposed to set that gap exactly. It was actually a tool originally supplied for refitting just this part, which is, I would say, overkill. Now, uh, when we have our new one, we have to push that on, trying to leave the same gap, which is tiny, you know, just basically refit it. Uh, I think there's enough oil in here already. I'm not going to add any more. And then you have to reassemble it all. So you have to put all those clips back on. Uh, the one that's easy to miss is the one at the end of the coupling or the end of the um, motor drive. So put all that back on. There's also one for the connector. So don't miss any. And then we have to refit the bracket to the machine, which is a bit fiddly because you kind of got three things to do at once. There's the uh, clip at the far end of the bracket, which you need to slide on. But you've also got a plastic actuator that goes through the deck, which you don't want to crush. And you've also got those little prongs that you need to try to get into the deck without crushing them. So you kind of have to 
wiggle it and jiggle it and try to get all of those things in at the same time. Once that's in, we can refit the deck and redo all the connectors. When it comes to refitting the front panel, it's extremely important that you open the uh, cassette door before you slide the front uh, of the machine back on. Uh, otherwise, it won't be uh, engaged properly with uh, the front door opener. There we go. And now final reassembly. There's some rubber pads here that keep falling off. I believe they're supposed to be there. So uh, I'll use a dot of glue to hold them in place. Okay, let's do a final test. So we have good picture and stereo sound. This particular tape's a little noisy. Uh, there's a 3DNR feature. You switch it on, it reduces the noise a tiny bit. But I do think that in general, the 950, uh, on some tapes that have a little bit more grain on them, can give a slightly noisier image than something like the 930, the NVHS 930 we were working on earlier. It's just something to do with the, uh, uh, the way they've set up the bandwidth, I think, in the machine, that some machines can tune how much... Um, video bandwidth they extract from the tape depending on how much noise they detect uh, or maybe how good the RF signal is from the tape and heads. Right, but that's working fine, got no problems with that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed us working on these two machines. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.